Okay, okay, I'll make the fucking boss list. Christ! I can't believe how long it took me to get this list in an order that I was happy with, but I'm totally confident that this list is about as objective as it could be. Or, at the very least, there are no fucking wacky choices like putting the dancer as the third best boss or anything like that. So hopefully you'll enjoy my beautiful bastard of a list, so let's just jump into it. So we're gonna start this shit show at the bottom, and lo and behold, what's this? Oh, it's just one of the worst non-bosses FromSoft has ever shot out. So the issue with this boss is that if you ever give players a choice, they will always make the most efficient route unless specifically challenging themselves. And the most efficient route just so happens to make this boss nothing more than an obstacle course, and as it's Dark Souls 3, there's no real challenge involved in running past enemies. On the flip side, without the plunging attack, the boss would still be one of the worst, as, you know, it's, it's actual fight is so intensely fucking boring, it just stomps or breathes fire. Uh, actually, it's kind of a bit like fighting Medea in that sense, you know, if Medea was just a paraplegic with Down Syndrome. So, you know, it really seems like it was designed in such a way as to discourage you from fighting it. It's also very obvious what to do when it just lets you run past it anyway, so terrible fucking boss. Second on this list is Walner. Higher than the Ancient Wyvern, really only because it's maybe somewhat more of a challenge, it's slightly more of a fight, fuck. I don't know, it's definitely better, but I'm not even really sure how, just... Really, the bottom few bosses are almost interchangeable. I suppose Walner is kinda cool looking, which ironically makes it worse overall. So, are we gonna talk about why gimmick bosses really suck in Dark Souls, and it's because they go against the formula but in a bad way. People want to be challenged and they want to fight an opponent one on one, so when the boss itself is in fact very easy and trivial compared to even some enemies, it's just a huge disappointment. Walner is no exception to this. He looks great but the actual boss is no lethality and you know, you need to work out the formula on how to win. How could anybody possibly work out that you need to hit the bangles? Jesus Christ, you know, these things would actually be okay if it was like a little separate thing before the boss fight. But no, nope, that's all there is to it. It's not a boss, it is a puzzle. And not even a fucking good one. So, does anyone remember the mages in the congregation? <laughs> remember how shit that was? Well, now you get to relive the nightmare all over again. I suppose Dark Souls is meant to be mentally punishing, isn't it? But, I mean, does this count? I think it does, I suppose, so these kinds of bosses suck because, you know, they're really just quite brainless, right? Uh, horde bosses aren't inherently bad, as long as, you know, one, they aren't just normal fucking enemies, and two, they create an interesting dynamic to the gameplay. You know, in the way Ornstein Smo or Dark Lurker force you to play differently, Deacons does none of this, however, you just swing wildly until the big one is dead. There really isn't any reason for this having one big HP bar either, is there? I mean, really? Can someone justify that? So, you know, lack of challenge, lack of creativity, and just lack of interesting mechanics is what makes this boss shit. Also, the arena is like donut shaped, and that's never even taken advantage of either. But, you know, at least, right, at least it has a good theme tune. I've always liked the Deacon's track, hence why it's above the other bosses. So, this boss was almost last. But I'm trying to look at things objectively, so realistically, this is where it should be. Although, it is definitely the biggest disappointment in the entire game, and I'm astounded that it was never patched. It's, it's not the worst boss, it's just one of the worst bosses. So why is it bad? Well, it's yet another gimmick boss, a hyped up gimmick boss at that. It reeks of forced throwbacks from Demon Souls that it just didn't need to be there and left a sour taste because the gimmick takes away from the extremely amazing potential of this boss. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Yorm would have been significantly better. Again, another example of swapping a boss fight with a gimmick fight. Instead of, you know, just at least giving us both the gimmick and the fight. Also, why the fuck would he have the weapon specifically designed to kill him, or let alone, you know, let us have it? Why, why does he have it? I would even have accepted some kind of trade-off for using the Storm Ruler, or even if fucking only Sigurd had it, but you know, he'll always die in the fight and only takes 50% of Yorm's HP off him. Hence, you know, the reward for his quest is an easier boss rather than the boss just gives us the fucking win button regardless. It's not fun, it's not satisfying, it's just shit. Recycled idea? Check. 
Boss becomes a mob later on. Check. Total lack of actual challenge or satisfaction. Check. I just feel like given how this boss is literally just pinwheel with more HP, which was already just fool's idol, it's really hard to place any higher. It's super mundane and it was just dumb giving the real one a different colour magic as well because it made it so easy and so identifiable. You know, it, it also, it felt really out of place in Dark Souls 3 because it's the only boss that felt like a Dark Souls 2 kind of filler boss. Now, I'm gonna say, there's nothing inherently wrong about, you know, kind of going back and copying previous ideas, but if you are gonna do it, you know, at least do it right, make it significantly better, don't just give us a Crystal Sage, please. So, I feel like this boss being even this high up on the list might trigger some people, as a lot of people really despise this boss, and for good reason, right? But, realistically, is me saying this is the sixth worst boss that bad? Out of all the gimmick bosses, it's the least worst, I think, because it turns into like a kind of semi-non-gimmick boss. You know, w once you get the weird tree cock out of the thing, it, you know, it's like hitting some weak points to get the actual boss out of it. So, you know, it's kind of along the lines of how I'd do a gimmick boss at least. And, you know, the big drop is cool. Ultimately, lack of challenge and the fact that it's still a gimmick boss is what lets it down, but it's definitely far better than the other gimmick bosses, I suppose. <sighs> okay, so Gunder isn't a terrible boss. It's certainly the best tutorial boss we've ever been given, but really that's kind of why it's held back. It's the first boss, it's the tutorial boss. So ultimately it is, you know, kind of easy and it doesn't have that many attacks. You know, have you ever tried this with the Sorcerer class by the way? It's stupidly easy, it's impossible to lose. And, you know, it, it does a solid job of introducing the level of difficulty and the mechanics to expect for new players. So, yeah, you know, for what it is, it's decent, but it's just, it's impossible to place any higher on the list than what it is, realistically. Still, given all this, you know, I, I think it's I think it's pretty fun. You know, I, I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with this boss, so, yeah, it's fine. From this point onwards, I'd see we're in the meh section of bosses, which makes the next boss the worst of the meh. And maybe because he's the tutorial boss, Gunder's kind of in his own category, because he isn't bad. Anyway, right, right, so we move on to the Consume King. I'm really not sure what the fuck they were trying to do with this boss. I went in thinking he was a challenging boss, but after a few more tries of this guy, it's clear to me now why Gary was able to just wreck his shit with, you know, whilst being in immeasurably pissed. All this boss does is just kind of fucking pop off, but like, no end goal. It just pisses about and runs super fast. But the boss has like a hard time actually being able to fucking hit you for some reason. I mean, it does hit like a fucking bag of trucks if it does get you. Tell you what though, I really do love the visual design of this guy. Uh, some mulatto melted dragon bastard. It's pretty cool. Sadly, everything it does is just done better by another boss. I feel like this guy is just a waste of a bomb ass 3D model. So ultimately, it's not bad, but it's just outclassed by pretty much every other boss for all the things that he does. So you're all definitely going to hate me for this choice, but please hear me out, okay, please. <laughs> the Abyss Watchers are pri the prime example of style over substance, but with just a few tweaks they could have been far, far higher on the list, but ultimately it, it, they really fall short. Now, I know a lot of you guys like this boss, and that's fine, but I mean, you're also just wrong. Frankly, I think the fact that this boss is not only parryable and backstabbable, some of their attacks will also bounce off your fucking shield. It's it's almost like they're just begging to be killed. And, you know, they take hits like weak humanoid enemies with zero poise. Dark Wraiths take hits better than the Abyss Watchers. As, you know, as well as the boss beats itself for you in its first form, I just do not understand the purpose behind this, by the way. I get there's like a big lore reason behind it, but it could have been done, you know, in a far better way, surely. And now that, you know, the final form of the boss, you know, that is a fun fight. It is, if exceptionally easy. So, I mean, it's not all bad, and the soundtrack is amazing, but it's just not enough to boost this boss any higher, sadly. Because it really, it this, you know, it's one of the four main hyped up bosses, and given how easy it is, it just makes it even more disappointing. As well as, it does just feel like you're fighting other humanoid enemies. It doesn't feel like they are any different from most of the other enemies that you encounter, like, out in the field. So, the justification for Vort being here 
is that he doesn't have all the negatives of the Abyss Watchers. It doesn't beat itself up, it's not parryable, etc. And, you know, it does the speedy thing that Osiris does a lot better as well. Now, if is Vort easy? Yes. But is his difficulty fine for being essentially the Taurus Demon? Also yes. It's a lot more forgivable given that he's the second boss in the game and his action mechanics are decent. Frankly, if he just had a little more HP and an AoE frost attack instead of the spit out a cloudy one that gives you enough time to turn his asshole into a nice place of residence, then he'd actually be pretty solid. Although none of these things are a thing, so he'll always just remain just okay. Now, this boss Loki is almost a hidden gem in Dark Souls 3, as it could almost have been great. This boss is a lot going for it actually, it's really tanky and can take a beating, which is good as you know it keeps the fight going on longer and it doesn't really move much. The second stage of the fight is really cool and he has a lot of varied attacks, two of which really stand out. The AoE fire attack that moves in and out is really sick as it's like a movement that's never really been seen in Dark Souls in terms of dodging, so that was nice to experience. Coupled with the fucking big ass meteor attacks, it's easy to dodge, but it forces you to move. Sadly, this boss has one giant shortcoming, and it's the fact that all his fucking attacks go flying over your head, so there's zero lethality. If the boss had like a jump backwards move, it would be amazing. And you know, if you do manage to get hit by its attacks, you do hit for like a pretty decent amount, but it, just the fact that he's pretty not mobile is really such a letdown with the boss. This boss really could have been so fantastic. If I'm being honest, my heart says that this boss should be a little higher, but looking at it objectively, this is probably where it should be. Not for lack of quality, but more down to lack of creativity. Now, this doesn't mean the boss isn't without some merit, it's just aside from the wolf going fucking ham, it's a little run of the mill in its other aspects. For instance, the first part of the fight is just a fight with an NPC, I, I don't really think NPC fights that use weapons the way you do, should really ever be used as bosses, and you know, the wolf is just that, it's a big wolf. But overall in my opinion, the wolf is a ton of fun to fight due to how fast it goes, and you know, if you fuck up a dodge, it's hitting for a lot. I suppose you could say that this boss, you know, really gets the blood pumping, and you know, it gives you the illusion of it being more difficult than it actually is. So, you know, ultimately it is fun, but you know, that's why it's down at this level, it's, it's superficial. I guess if you were to come to the DLC as soon as it's offered to you, then it's, it's really going to challenge you. But unless you're doing that, you know, it's... It's fine. J just fuck you to anybody that said to me that this boss was like one of the best in the game. I've seen so many people say that this boss was, and I quote, literally almost impossible. Well, I don't know what timeline he was shot out of, but it wasn't this one. The, the boss does like almost nothing for a good chunk of the fight. Now, right, let's get things straight. I'm not amazing at these games. I'm, I'm alright. I'd say I have more of a technical knowledge than an applied skill set. But you'd have to have fucking brain damage to have an issue with this boss. Gary beat this boss in incredibly drunk first go, and that says it all. Now, I understand that this is anecdotal evidence, but holy shit. It just lets you hit its ass down to like two thirds HP before it even starts doing anything impressive. Now, the boss isn't without merit, right? It's definitely better than the bosses before it on this list, and it can deal a huge chunk of damage if it hits you. It does have a few attacks that can apply pressure, you know, if it ever fucking bothers to do them. You know, for a dancer, I've never seen something move so little. So, I went and looked at footage of other people fighting this thing, and I think the thing that they might be getting wrong is that you use a controller with your hands and not your fucking feet. Right, so, right. I'm definitely being a little harsh on this boss. I just personally don't think it lives up to the insane hype. But it is, it is a decent boss, truth be told. And it seems to me that the difficulty people have with this boss is that its single hit damage is fucking insane, and some people just don't bother to level vigor all that much, so when they do fuck up, they just get wiped out. But if you're half competent and have a balanced character, I really don't see the dancer ever being that much of an issue. And I'm going to go down and say, like, you know, the music and visuals of this boss are really fucking great as well. Like, I'm just putting that out there. The boss is definitely not without merit. But I guess I just had to get this particular topic off my chest because so many people held the dancer up to a massive standard. And I just, I just don't see where it's coming from. It's a good boss, but it is not fucking insane. 
So, I feel like on the surface, the dancer could, to the layman, seem like a better boss than Dragon Slayer Armor. But, but hear me out, I think ultimately Dragon Slayer Armor is just that little bit better for, you know, for one, it's aggressive off the bat. Two, it has that big ass shield that you need to avoid hitting. Three, he can also go fucking ham and do crazy one hit damage as well. Four, the arena itself is a hazard and you, you know, you need to avoid falling off potentially. Five, by the end of the third stage of the boss, you know, you've got a lot of shit to, you have to deal with. You know, you've got the, fuck, what would you even call these things? Grass? Birds? Fuck knows, right, point is, you need to avoid their attacks as well as, you know, not falling off and you've got this thing fucking attacking you. And then six, right, it has that sick ass fake out attack where he stumbles back and you think you have an opening, but oh no you don't! So really, Dragon Slayer Armor is actually a pretty decent fight. My appreciation for it has definitely went up the more that I've fought him. You know, he's not the most unique or tough fight, but it's definitely a fair mix of fun and difficulty. So, you know, for Dark Souls 3 standards anyway, it's a pretty decent boss. So we now move into the top 10. Funnily enough, I'd say all the bosses past this point are good bosses. Aldrich is a boss that does something no other boss in any Souls game has done before. And it has an attack that you can only really get away from it by running, not dodging. This is so fucking sick. Seriously, y'all gotta be appreciating this. It makes fighting Aldrich feel different to any other boss. And I definitely feel like Aldrich has decent lethality as well compared to most other Dark Souls 3 bosses. There's a lot of elements to this fight as well. You know, we've got this unique attack coupled with the fact that he's always kind of like teleporting away and then he like bombards you with attacks you need to dodge. You know, you can get a few hits in. It's just different and I like different, so Aldrich gets my vote. We come to another boss that does a really cool unique thing and that's Pontiff Sullivan. Now, I wouldn't say that Pontiff is all that difficult. I've personally never had a problem, but you know, that doesn't make the fight any less fun. The way he creates an apparition of himself that attacks just after him is so fucking cool and it, you know, it makes this really interesting take on a multi-target boss as once the first uses an attack, you know the same attack is coming. So it kind of gives you a chance to prepare, but at the same time it's also like double as difficult, you know? Frankly, this all leads to a very fun fight and you know, he's highly aggressive. Really not much more than that, he's just a downright good, I suppose, <laughs> 2v1 fight. The next boss is Twin Princes. Nothing especially unique to the boss, but it is ultimately just a really fucking sick fight. The second phase is just a pumped up version of the first one, where the second brother lobs spells at you as well, so it gives this boss ranged and close attacks. Not only this, it is, you know, it's possible to fuck this boss up and kill the wrong brother first, which leads to the second brother reviving him. Again, you know, the quality of this boss for me comes down to how the boss gets around the room. The boss quickly teleports about you before it attacks, meaning your dodges need to be on point and, you know, he's always going to be on your ass as well, so you can't really run away either. Getting greedy with these fuck can only go be your downfall. Ultimately, the boss is just a great mix of challenge and fun, and a good test of your skills. Sadly, it can be a bit cheesy at times with some weapons allowing you to basically exclusively hit the younger prince on his back without getting him to revive the older one. Still, even despite that, the boss is still fucking good. And a lot of that does come down to the fact that he is one of the more challenging bosses in Dark Souls 3. So, by the time you're actually fighting him, uh, it actually feels refreshing because of how fairly difficult the boss is in comparison to most other bosses. Without a doubt, people are going to hate me for putting the Nameless King not in the top 3 or even 5, but look, 7th is still great. This boss is great, but... Can we all agree that the main aspect of this boss's difficulty is the fucking camera in the first stage? Search your heart, you know it to be true. Once you master the quote unquote easier first stage, the second stage is actually a lot easier because you have a good amount of Estus. The Nameless King is also quite easy if you just don't get greedy. It's so, so hard to mess the dodges up if you just attack twice and then no more. Anyway, enough shitting on this thing. The boss is great. I mean, it's seventh. It's amazing. And I'm not sure if this is true, but I feel like some of the second stage's attack timings seem to switch up a little bit. Or, you know, be kind of off time. Can someone back this up, by the way? Plus, if you do get hit with an attack from this guy, then you're definitely gonna be fucking feeling it. No matter, like, how much HP or defense your guy has, he just fucking slices through you like butter. 
not only this, I mean, the boss really gives off some really epic vibes. You know, I so fucking hate saying that, but it, it is, it's true. You're fighting this giant dragon and the cunt fucking comes off you and he's like walking towards you. And the soundtrack is so good. So, so yeah, I mean, the Nameless King's fucking incredible. So you either know or you don't, but if you have good taste, then you'll agree with the placement of Champion Gunder. Essentially, the distilled essence of a good fucking boss fight. And why is that? Because it just cuts the shit. No frills, it just comes at you and he wants you fucking dead. Fast paced, fun, challenging, simple as that. No tedious S to sponge parts of the fight. And frankly, I'd say that this guy is ultimately more difficult than the Nameless King, as he seems to have a more extensive, varied moveset, harder to dodge attacks. The Nameless King, on the other hand, has higher one-hit potential, sure. I would just personally say that Gunder's difficulty is a bit more of a, a satisfying difficulty, as opposed to the Nameless King, where you know, Gunder, you're, you're dodging attacks and you get hit, you're like, oh man, I got hit, I messed up, but with the Nameless King, when you do mess up and you get hit, you're like, jeez, it just done so much damage out of nowhere. Personally, I just think Gunder's just a little bit better in that sense, but anyway, hopefully you agree, because Gunder's fucking good and you should all fucking appreciate him. I mean, when a boss gives Steven a challenge like that, you know, you know he's worth his weight in salt. The first boss of the second DLC, and frankly... This boss decided to start the way the DLC decided to go on. Tough as fuck. I really don't think I'd have beaten this had I not respect into the bleed build. This boss is a multi-target boss and it almost sucked, but the two demons are just different enough and don't seem to spam attacks at you either. Another cool feature is how, you know, when you do the first half, the second half is different depending on what one died last. And, right, you know, they've done a great job of making Dark Souls feel larger, right, just in terms of scale and, like, epicness, uh, this boss really fucking shines. A great example of, like, genuine difficulty and, like, extreme spectacle, like, combined as well. Seriously, every attack these guys do has you convinced that you're just, you're, that's it, you're fucking dead, and, you know, the devs had the sheer gall, the fucking audacity to have you kill both demons and then get the last form, unlike every other fucking boss, where you generally kill one half of the two, and then you get the last form. So, you have to kill both, and then you have to kill, like, the, the powered up one. So, yeah, I mean, this bot is so fucking fun to fight, and it's, oh man, it's a treat for the eyes as well. So, by all rights, this boss should, should be lower, simply because the first two, yes, two stages of this fight are clearly just meant as Estus sponges to make the final form harder. And it does feel a bit cheap but fucking hell the last stage is just maria tier levels of great the main fight is so great that it massively makes up for the shortcomings of the other two so the first part you know it's, it's all right it's a fair challenge not a whole lot to say the second stage is just insane you have two enemies t totally separate enemies sharing one hp bar which is just so strange as you could focus entirely on Fred and then have Father Ariando die, which seems a bit weird to me. The stage is pretty decent, honestly, but you know you can just wail on the big guy for the most part and get it done pretty quickly because he's got such a gigantic hitbox. But then you get to the actual meat and potatoes of the fight that could could have been more fun had you just half your Estus from the start going into the fight, which would have saved at least a bit of fucking time. But my God, this fight is just so fantastic. It's amazing to look at as well. It just adds to the whole experience, and she's as fucking tough as John Cena in the Marine as well, so it really it really feels like the final boss of a DLC. And, I mean, in saying that, there's only two bosses, but at the same time, they, they, made, they made the boss the final one that feel like the final one, but it's, it's true, oh my god, the fucking boss is so good, so... Yeah, a boss so good that even with two Esther Sponge fucking parts of the boss, it more than makes up for it. So... Midder, or Midir, I'm going to say Midder. Without a doubt, in my opinion, the hardest boss in the entirety of the Soul series. Yup, even harder than Koss, possibly even too hard, hence why it isn't actually higher. I just felt like I, I could only beat this guy if I used a very specific build and like no other way was even slightly feasible for me. But hey, I beat it. You know, it, humans didn't become this successful by only using force, so I used my big ass fucking brain to beat it. But anyway, 
This thing is truly a great way to top off the Soul series. I mean, it really needed to be this hard, and frankly, you know, it really seems to put you against impossible odds. I, you know, I felt like I was playing Monster Hunter more than Dark Souls with this one. And see, when Steven can't beat a boss, then you know something is up. So, this boss is, is, it is a lot of fun to fight, it's an incredible spectacle, but just the, the enormous challenge that comes from this boss, but not, not in like a frustrating way because you do feel like you can beat it, it's just, it's, the odds are so stacked against you. So, yeah, with, with that balance that Midder has managed to make, that's why it's this high up. So, the last two bosses, and it had to be one or the other at this stage, so the second best boss goes to Soul of Cinder. A huge HP pool, massive move set as he's got several forms that he just randomly transforms into, which can lead to this guy being you know really fucking challenging because it's unpredictable, especially on your first attempt. But you know not too challenging, just that right amount where it remains fun and it you know it feels possible. And then we get to the second stage, of which the first stage doesn't feel like an S to sponge. God, this guy's settings it is so brilliant. The way the music changed to Gwyn's theme, the way he's using a powered up Gwyn moveset, the fact you can't fucking parry him. It's, you know, it's the way Gwyn should have been. And it shows because this boss is so fucking amazing. And it's only upstaged in its perfect balance by... Slave Nightgale. So really, how could any other boss be number one, realistically? It's pretty much everything good about Solo Cinder, or what makes a really great boss in, in any game really just summed up. Hits like a truck, huge moveset, challenging fight, might I say the, the absolute most perfect balance of challenge to fun, you know, given it's the last boss in the game as well. A boss that's challenging even to veteran players, the sheer fucking adrenaline rush you get from this guy, especially in that third stage. You don't feel like, you know, the game has to scrape Estus off you just for it to be hard, it's just straight up tough. And, you know, he has a lot of HP, giving the player a lot of time to fuck up, and hence it adds to the difficulty. But it also doesn't feel like a chore because of just how fun the boss is to fight. I was actually disappointed when I beat him because it means that I can't fucking fight him anymore. I was having such a good time fighting this boss. So, you know a boss has to be number one when beating it is disappointing. Like, you don't even, you, you, you're happy that you beat him, but then at the same time you're like, God, now what am I going to fucking do? So that's Slave Night Gale for you, just perfect, the absolute best boss, and one of the best bosses in the entirety of the Soul series, in my opinion. A boss that's so good, it has managed to counteract all the shortcomings of Dark Souls 3's mechanics in order to make the, you know, the boss fun and challenging. So at this point at the end, I'm going to talk about Half Light. Technically, this boss is really weak, and I'd put it just above the first Gunder fight. It's a multi-target NPC fight that does have a, a tiny bit of merit, as the Painting Guardians were always spawn in, and Half Light himself has the boss buffs, so it's not quite like just fighting an NPC. The boss is a lot like the old Monk boss fight, except it's controlled by a Covenant, and you know, can be brung in the boss on a regular basis, which is exactly how they should have done it. And you can reset the boss and fight it over and over, which is also fucking cool. So, because the boss can be any player, it fills this strange gap of being technically one of the best bosses in the game via PvP, but really weak if you play it offline. So, you know, it's it's really hard to place on the list. I figured it was best to have it take its own unique place as, you know, it's really meant to be played online anyway to get the full experience. So, it's kind of out with the list that I've just, I've just made. It's kind of its own category completely, because it's kind of more just a PvP arena, realistically. You know what I mean? This brings me to the end of another video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Tell you what, if enough people fucking make a fuss in the comments, I'll make a master boss list, including all the Dark Souls 3 bosses, and an updated boss list from the last one that I've done. I'll do that just for you. But anyway, sorry about this one taking such a long time between my last video. I've been caught up with the festive season and then also work, and then I've just had so much banned stuff I've had to take care of. Uh, so really, you know, if anyone wants to fling a few simoleons my way via Patreon and help the situation out, be highly appreciated. Just like how I appreciate each and every one of the patrons on Patreon keep this channel alive currently. And I know I've not updated the taglines and the end credits, but I figured getting this video out quickly would make more sense. And I've not had the time to update that yet because, like I said, I've been so busy. 
But I will have it done for the next video, which should be soon enough because normal video production is back on track. So I will see you in the next video, guys. See you then.